Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Through all of our grumblings on slippery, slushy roads, through all of our dismal gray day for, what, six days straight now, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I welcome those of you that are joining us online through Facebook Live. If you have the opportunity to put into chat where you are so that we may know where our neighbors and friends are joining us this morning, um, that would be awesome. I hope that you have received the bulletin for the day. I call your attention um, to the announcements in the back. It's a very short list. We didn't want to get into the new year quite yet, so we're just keeping it to this. Um, this coming Wednesday night is the longest night service. So if you find that life is not all sparkly and bright, I invite you into the space where together we can sit with all of those things and find hope. So please join us uh, Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Christmas Eve service starts at 9 o'clock here. And then Christmas Day um, will be very casual. So come as you are, come as uh, wide awake and as sleepy headed as you may be Christmas morning, and come and worship and be together through the generations. Going into um, the announcements, lots of things have been happening around here in the last two weeks or so, and outreach seems to be the theme. Outreach reaching out into the community, people reaching out for us, outreach. Um, one of the things that happened this week, um, and actually I got this email last Sunday as I was preparing for worship in the morning, so it didn't get read, um, so I've got permission to read it today. One of the things that happened the past week was the ladies made cookies, they got packaged, and they got delivered, outreach reaching out with a simple plate of cookies. And for those of you that are recipients of them, I'm sure they have filled many places in your soul, in your heart, and in your belly. 
But this one comes from Roger, and he wrote to me last week. I know you were probably preparing for service now, so if this reaches you too late for today, would you please present this during next week's service during Joys and Concerns? I'm going to put it here with announcements. Yesterday, the church delivered a wonderful box of cookies and candy and a loaf of applesauce, applesauce walnut bread, for which I want to offer a resounding thank you. It is not as if I needed any more pounds to add to those I already gained over my Thanksgiving trip. But I am very grateful to have the cookies now in several Tupperware boxes in my freezer to exhume during the darker days of winter. And I am enjoying some of the deliciously moist applesauce bread with my morning coffee right now. More to the point, this gift says to me how much love there is for Helen in this church that she so loved for all of her life. And that alone will keep this church in a special place in my heart. Thank you for all that is done, for all that you share, for all the love that you had for her. It is a joy for me. Roger. So as we move through this holiday season, as we move into a new year and new work at this church, whatever that may be, let us keep outreach, reaching out as a focus. And I know Beth has got some other stuff to add to that. Good morning. Um, so Patty received that. We received a letter last week that I'd like to read to you today. Oops. As you know, this is our third year of the Boots for Babies program that the Youth Sunday School class has chosen as their yearly service project. Our first year, our goal was 25 pairs of boots for the baby pantry, and we did 105. Last year, we did 153, and this year, we did 201 pairs of boots for the Benzie County Baby Pantry. This is where this ties in. Joy Foster of St. Philip's Baby Pantry generously offered 26 pairs of toddler-sized boots that your class had previously donated to help Church of the Holy Trinity start a baby pantry in Manistee. We opened our doors in De on December 3rd and were overwhelmed by the profound response of gratitude from the mothers who visited that day. Manistee has had two significant snowstorms so far this winter. The children who were without boots either had to stay inside or endure wet and freezing cold feet. Reverend Higgins shared the story of your yearly bottle and can drive to earn the funds necessary to purchase the boots. Knowing that there are young people like yourselves demonstrating God's love so selflessly makes the future very hopeful indeed. Members of the Church of the Holy Trinity extend our wholehearted appreciation and blessings to you. We pray that your mission continues and provides an example for others to follow. Yours in Christ, John Carter, Senior Warden. So, <laughs> um, this, is, this warms our hearts because, um, and it's because of the people in this church people in this community who donate bottles and cans that we were able to provide boots this year. That is outreach. It's outreach not only into our congregation, it's outreach into our community. And by word of mouth, it, it has spread that this is what we're doing. People we don't even know call and want us to pick up their bottles and cans or they'll drop them off. And this is the prime example of the young people who are recipients. We work hand in hand with St. Philip's Episcopal Church, um, and then particularly the baby pantry. Um, this year, as some of you know, um, we did our adoption. We had five families, and late the week before last, I got a call, and they had seven families left. We took a family of six. The people stepped up in this church, but Joy Foster at the Baby Pantry also stepped up and took tags to help us out. Um, we donated blankets to them. They bring boots. If we need, people have contacted us and said, hey, we hear that you have a boot pantry. Can we get some boots? We get a hold of Joy. 
she gets them out to the individuals or to us so that we can pass them out. It's really important that we work together in this community. And I just want to give you some examples of some of the things we've done over the past few weeks. In addition to the 201 pairs of boots that we've donated, we donated 144 toys for Toys for Tots. When they came to pick them up, they picked up the, the, box. the box and um, were on their way out. And <laughs> Chris was here, and they said, oh, wait, 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 um, and took them down to the, Sunday school, the youth Sunday school classroom, and there were 100 and some in there. Um, and they were surprised that everything was all name brand Legos and um, top shelf <laughs> Barbie and, and all kinds of things. So that is one thing. That's why we worked so hard in fundraising this year so that we are able to provide for the youngest residents of Benzie County. We have done the cookies. We have also, we also have done the five families in addition, we took the six. We've had a couple other people who have um, contacted us who are in need, and we're working on some of those things. This week, we'll be delivering five um, food baskets throughout our community, and that's just the beginning. We have a lot of plans for 2023. Sorry, Earl. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I read this thing the other day, and I, I brought it to Patty, and I think this is, this is what we are, and it said, we're here to help people. And um, thank you to all of you who make this possible. And in helping people, we have provided snow pants for at least oh, one small child that um, needed snow pants that is too big for the baby pantry. We provide showers at least twice a week for some of our unhoused people. They come to the barn and take a shower. We have outreach, but I invite you to think about what that looks like in the coming year. So there's our service, public service announcement for the morning. <laughs> Are there other um, announcements or joys and concerns? <laughs> Beth, you still have the mic. Yes, I do. So I have, this is the last, last Sunday to sign up for uh, coffee hour for 2023. And just a reminder to people that Women's Fellowship schedules this. We're not responsible to provide coffee hour every week. So some of you men, if you'd like to sign up, we will assist you. I have this out. It'll be on the table. And we'll see you after church. We had such a joy last night with Mia's, I won't say it right, quinceanera, <laughs> even though I had a Spanish lesson, which I was starving to death, but we got the lesson anyways. <laughs> but we want to thank everyone in this church for all your support. It was a, a wonderful evening, and you were a large percentage of the audience. And speaking of outreach, um, the youth sat in the second and third pew, and a lot of them are unchurched. And I loved how we interacted with Mia. I mean, people were saying things from the audience. And I don't think a lot of people think churches are like that. They think you have to just sit there with your hands folded in your lap. And there was a lot of laughter. And it just wouldn't surprise me if one or two of those kids ever showed up to join us because they had a really good time here in our church. Thank you all for your support. My nephew, Philip Lyman, was in the hospital again last week. He had about 30 pounds of water taken off of him. He had Lasix and an IV, and so we need to keep remembering Phil. <laughs> Thank you. Well, first I want to add my thanks to Roger's thanks for the box of cookies that were brought to me. I'm carefully rationing them. <laughs> then the other is a concern I have. Uh, 
I learned that Friday afternoon, my sister-in-law, who would be 94 in January, had a heart attack. Uh, she was able to get quickly to the hospital in Missoula, and by the time I heard, she'd already had the stent placed and was back in her room and cheerful. And a further uh, report on Saturday said she continues to do well and possibly will be going home on Monday. All right. Um, uh, I am traveling on Thursday home to Maui to be with my family for Christmas and New Year's. And New Year's Day is my mother's 101st birthday. So it's mainly, <laughs> mainly to be with my mother. But Thursday is when, so a uh, concern for me is I, I'd like prayers for safe travels because Thursday is when the bad weather is coming in and that I'm leaving early Thursday morning. So. And I'll be gone for about a month, so okay. I'll see you all next year <laughs> after today. We'll, we'll pray for happy returns as well. Are there any other joys and concerns? Oh, actually, yes, Patty, just real quick. Um, I would like us to keep Becky Ogilvie uh, in our thoughts and prayers. She had a mild stroke about a week and a half ago. And last I had heard, which has been a while, so maybe you can add to this, she was doing really well. And um, I know she's planning on volunteering at Bacon tomorrow. So evidently, she must be doing quite well. I, I heard tell that she wanted to go to the gala Friday night. I don't know if she got there or not, but that's what her goal was, was to get to the gala Friday night. I invite you to take all of those places, all of those places of concern for Philip and Nancy for travel and for birthdays, and all of those places of giggles for cookies and full bellies and outreach and Mia, to take all the things that you carry with you and know that the God who dwells before us, and the God who dwells among us, and the God who calls us to dwell with each other is present in this place. Let us prepare for worship. Good morning. Good morning. It's nice to see everybody here on this very slippery, icy morning. 
Uh, Crystal Drive is just one sheet of ice from one end to the other, but uh, winter is finally here and it's very appropriate for the Christmas season. Agnes and I would like to wish all of you a very merry, happy, and safe Christmas. Now would you join with me in the call to worship in your bulletins. We believe that creation is inextricably linked. We, belong we all belong to one another in an, in an undeniable, undeniable way. way. We are bone of bone and flesh of flesh, life breathed into dust. We believe, we believe that, that God, God invites, invites us, us to live into that truth, to love without abandon, to, to see the good in one, one another, another to, trust to trust that all belong to God. God. We know that this life of connection is easier said than done, which is why we gather in this space week after week generation after generation to be reminded we, we see, see God, God in each, each other, other. This, this we believe. believe amen Chris actually if you Logistics and moving parts are a wonderful part of Christmas. So continuing with our generation to generation theme as we light the Advent candles, over 100 people from the ages of 2 into 80 were asked the question, what makes you feel connected? What makes you feel loved? From the voices of different generations, hear their answers. Handwritten notes. Casseroles. Being invited in. Rudy a book together. The passing of the peace. Family walks. Youth group. Want to see my friends at school. Surprise phone calls. Making music with other people. Home cooked food. Belly laughs. Eye contact. Dinner parties. An inside joke. Hugs. Dancing with my partner in the kitchen. Today we light the candle of love as a reminder that from the very first generation, God has surrounded us with love. May this good news, these threads of love, not only weave deeper connections between neighbors, but shape our actions and allow us to see God more clearly. In a lonely world, let this light shine bright. From generation to generation, we are held in God's love. Thanks be to God for that good news. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able in body or spirit and lift your voices for our opening hymn number 110, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
Would you all join me now in the gathering prayer? God of all, we are a mixed bag of distracted and forlorn, eager and anxious. We hope that you might move through the obstacle course we build around our hearts and douse us in good news. For at the end of the day, all we want is to know that we are not alone, that you are always near. So pull us close and tell us your story of unbelievable good news, for we are listening. Amen.
It's so nice to have the choir back and to have the sanctuary filled with their music again. I'd like to thank them all. It's very, very enjoyable. And I want to take a moment uh, to thank Patty. Patty puts a lot of this together, and she works very, very hard. It's not just Sunday. So I'd like to publicly thank her for all her work she does in putting all these services together. I thank all the worship leaders that helped me get the work done, so. <laughs> And now for the liturgy for today uh, from the book of Luke, uh, part of the announcement of the coming of our Lord. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you, young woman, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. And Mary said, My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in you, my Savior. For you have looked with favor upon your lowly servant, and from this day forward all generations will call me blessed. For you, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. Your mercy reaches from age to age for those who fear you. You have shown strength with your arm. You have scattered the proud in their conceit. You have disposed the mighty from their thrones. And you have raised up the lowly from, the low pla from high places. You have filled the hungry with good things, while you have sent the rich away empty. You have come to the aid of Israel, your servant, mindful of your mercy. The promise you made to our ancestors, to Sarah and Abraham, and their descendants forever. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. When it was time for Elizabeth to have her baby, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown her great mercy, and they shared her joy. May we be blessed by the reading, hearing, and understanding of God's holy word. Yes, it was a little interactive and a little turned around from the bulletin, the way we walk. Um, one of the cool things about Advent is you never know what's going to pop up and how the spirit moves, and so um, I was approached, the other worship leaders that help get things done around here, and they have some extra music, and we figured we'd pop it in here. So please, enjoy. Stood hard as iron 
throng of Jesse's language coming as men of old have sung. It came a blossom bright amid the cold of And all of God's children said, Amen. So I heard um, this week, thanks to Sarah, that last night's Mia's last piece uh, that was played was Gabriel's oboe. And that was uh, one of Cass' favorite pieces. I understand that she had tons of versions of this music. And then that piece just now, um, as we reflect on generations to generations and how it's moved through this season, that was my grandmother's favorite piece, or one of them. So to pull her into this space, um, thank you. Life is good. Life is wonderful. Excuse me. My heart gets full some days. So this morning's reading, generations through generations, we have Mary and her cousin Elizabeth. Or maybe it's Elizabeth and her cousin Mary. I guess it depends on where you stand in the story and where you stand in the family on who's related to who. It's always a great conversation in my family if I am Beth's sister or if Beth is my sister. But where would we be without Mary and Elizabeth, our faith maternal ancestors, cousins to each other? Had it not been for these two women, I'm sure that God would have found another way to break the good news into the human history to bring about the kingdom, his love for everyone, but God didn't have to. We have been given the story of Mary and Elizabeth, and they share the good news with us. Mary and Elizabeth, in a day and an age that so much of the time overlooked women, became the people through whom God took on human form and makes an entrance. In a day and age when women were often given very little voice, Mary and Elizabeth shout and sing and become examples of the power in believing. Much like Miriam did, the crossing of the Red Sea, generations before them. In believing that God might be up to doing something new. In believing that the miraculous can happen. Where would we be without the faith? of Mary and Elizabeth. Mary. The song and story and culture has told us over and over and over again that she was meek and mild. I will preach forever in a day that no, she wasn't. She is visited by an angel. 
She doesn't run away from the angel. She's told that she will have a child, and not only will she have a child, she will have the child out of wedlock. That the man that is betrothed to her will stick around and will eventually get married. And that her son will be the son of God. There is nothing meek and mild about her yes to that journey. Mary may not have shouted her response, but she was very firm in the giving of it. And no sooner does Mary say yes, as we are told in the stories, I, nowhere in the Bible do we hear that she goes and talks to Joseph. The angel goes and talks to Joseph. The angel and Joseph have a great conversation about what's going to happen, but they don't talk to each other. Mary takes off. And she takes off to go see Elizabeth in the Judean hill country all by herself. This would be a place where, you know, you sit there and go, who does she think that she is just taking off on this adventure? Most historians tell us that the people don't just up and travel unless they had something compelling or some cultural reason to do so. And women almost never did anything so bold on their own, especially while they're pregnant. It's just not a safe journey. Perhaps Mary believes that she must truly be blessed and that the baby she is carrying in her womb will ward off all the dangers of the road. On the other side or another facet to that story is Elizabeth. Immediately upon seeing Mary, she shouts in joy, my cousin, my kinfolk, here you are. And her own child, five to six months pregnant, kicks her and says, yes, I'm happy that this is happening. This person has come into our house, and we will all rejoice. Elizabeth overflows in her blessings of Mary. We can just about see them, can't we? Throwing their arms up into the air and hugging each other over and over, happy to see each other, happy for new beginnings. Perhaps you have seen this happiness and joy in your own family those long-distance get-togethers that happen once every three to four years, and the good news that's shared in between all of the hugs and the giggles of seeing long-since seen relatives. The faith of Mary and Elizabeth is where it all begins for all of us. The angels will eventually sing about peace for the earth, but only because these two women display the peace with God. God's kingdom will eventually take up residence in every corner of this world, but only because these vulnerable souls decided not to let the duty fall to someone else and first lets God take up residence in her own body. And in spite of the dangers this whole condition might put Mary in, we see more of Mary's faith and foresight in the song that she sings after Elizabeth blesses her. It's clear that she's beginning to understand how far-reaching her decision will be, down through all the generations, not just with Elizabeth. We know that the song that Mary sings after Elizabeth blesses her, Elizabeth magnifies Mary, and then Mary in turn magnifies God, shining light on God's love for all. She sees a world where God has put everything to right, where people who were proud and who have had everything will cling to power are removed from everyone's list of role models, and those who are humble, weak, and lowly are lifted up with examples, places to shine. She sings of a world where the hungry and the needy are satisfied with more than leftovers, and where those who have had a lot finally learn to live with just a little bit less. I don't think that we typically think of Mary's song, The Magnificant, as a Christmas carol. I can't remember ever really hearing it played outside of any big, high liturgical church service. It's not one we catch on the radio often. It doesn't have a cool little snappy beat to it. But in many ways, it is the first one, and it's the most essential, perhaps, it all begins with her recognition that even as easily forgotten, first century Jewish female soul can magnify the Lord. Where would we be without Mary? 
without Elizabeth? Where would any of us be without God's little magnifiers all around us? Those have, that have shined with power of faith in spite of the odds. Those who have borne Jesus to us and enabled us to read how much God truly loves us. More often than we can probably care to admit, it is the faith and belief of the lowly and the humble, the ones that we'd least expect, the ordinary people, the unspectacular people, which pops up out of nowhere and bowls us over with grace. So this time of year, I um, mix up my sermon prep time at home. Um, this time of year, I literally put my laptop computer in my lap. I put a bowl of popcorn beside me, and I need a bowl of popcorn, make a pan, it's all for me, and I watch Christmas movies. I like to say I watch them all. I skip over the Home Alone series. It just doesn't do me for me. But otherwise than that, I catch them all. In every one of them, though, we see Mary's story. We see it over and over again. Mary's faith and the echoes of her song show up in almost every single secular story and movie of our culture this time of year. In one movie, one show, one cartoon, one Rankin and Bass stop motion anime, power is spoken and transmitted through the weak and overlooked characters rather than the super talented superhumans. None of our favorite Christmas movies ever feature people, and I say this and I probably might get corrected later on, but none of our favorite Christmas movies ever feature people like Superman or Underdog or Iron Man or Wonder Woman, Luke Skywalker. Did they have a Christmas special? No? All right. I got it right this time. Fill in your own superhero, right? We don't have movies like that. It's the tiny people, it's the tiny Tims, it's the Cindy Lou Who's, it's Rudolph, it's George Bailey, it's Charlie Brown, and Buddy the Elf, who save the day time and time again. Personally, I'm very grateful that Bumbles bounce. All of them are just variations of Mary, examples of how God's plan, it is the meek and the marginalized who despite the odds, despite everything against them, become the entry point for grace, who become the voices to help restore justice, who become the unlikely people who speak a new reality into existence. Where would our culture's Christmases be without these little versions of Mary, of the magnifiers? So in doing all of my work and everything, this morning I came in and I pulled out our All Saints tablecloth. And on it, I opened it all up, and I'm not going to read all the names, but there are 40 female names on that All Saints tablecloth. If you want to read the whole list, I'll give it to you after worship. There are 40 people, 40 women on that list. Elsie, Marilyn, Ardeth, June, and Brenda, Pat, Kath, Joe, Vera, Helen in many iterations, Harriet. All of them, moms and Grammys and sisters and aunties, mentors, all of them magnifiers throughout the generations. Where would any of us be without the faith of the others who have borne God's presence for us, who have, through humility and surprise, through calm words or persistent pestering, depending on where you fall in those family dynamics, right, build up our own trust in God and presented us with joy in believing that a newborn babe can bring peace on earth. So who has helped you remember the power of faith who has approached you through the treacherous hill country of Judea to bring you safely home? Who has unexpectedly allowed you to understand and experience God's grace in Jesus Christ? And because these folks around us, even now, 
more often than we probably care to admit. They still walk among us. There are people that we can add to this list that are not yet um, saints by the definition of putting them on the tablecloth that stand before us and with us, who teach us and show us and grow with us in their careful, worded love statements and their persistent pesterings to be better human beings. God sends them all around us all the time and most often when we're struggling the most. When we find ourselves in those places where not everything this time of year is glittery and bright, merry and cheerful. Those saints and those angels walk with us. And they're around us even now. These echoes of Mary delivering God to us once again. They're here now telling us that in spite of all we see, in spite of all that we see in the world today, God's exciting new day has begun, and that you, that we, collectively, in all of our meekness and mildness, in all of our humility and our stubbornness, and in all of our saying, yes, we can, watch me, in our love for each other, can leave this place and proclaim that love into the community. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you as you are able in body or spirit to stand and lift your voices for the inserted hymn, All the Earth is Waiting. seated. I invite you into a spirit of prayer. However you speak with God today, eyes opened, eyes closed, hands folded, stretched for God or for neighbor, on your knees. However you speak with God this morning. God of yesterday and God of tomorrow, from the very beginning you gave us the gift of relationships. From the very beginning you tucked us into communities. From the very beginning you wired us for connection. From the very beginning you made our hearts capable of love. 
For this we come rejoicing. This gift of relationship has led us to people who lead us to you, and we are better for it. So today we say thank you for our Elizabeths, for the people who have thrown open the doors for us, who reveal in your joy, who point out your presence in our lives, who are quick to affirm us and to call us blessed. These people come in many shapes and sizes. For some of us, the Elizabeths in our lives are family members, parents and grandparents who have cheered us on along the way. For others, they are teachers and coaches, neighbors and scout leaders, professors and counselors. And we cannot forget the way our chosen family, our friends and partners, have been like Elizabeth for us. These people have reminded us what love looks like in a hurting world, which has pointed us back to you, Holy One. So today, God, we ask for your help in opening our eyes even more, to open our eyes to see you, to see you in those who love us well and in those who don't. We want to see you in those whose coffee order we have memorized and in those we've never talked to. We want to see you not only in those who are family, who look like us or think like us, but in those who come from very different places and positions in life. From generation to generation, you have left your fingerprints all over creation. Help us to be like Elizabeth, to see and celebrate glimmers of your good news in all walks of life. We hope and we pray as we say the prayer your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our trespasses. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we are God-centered. We are Christ-formed and we are spirit-led. As such, we are disciples of Jesus. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to make a difference in this world. One small way to make that difference is through our offertory. So whether you have put it in the offertory plate in Fellowship Hall, you have mailed it to the front office, or you have hit the donate button on the website, I invite you now to stand as you are able that we may bless this morning's offertory. join me in the prayer of dedication printed in the bulletin. We dedicate these gifts that they've been shared for the fortification of a beloved community. Let these gifts do justice in the world so that all may know that you're loved by God. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is number 120 in the red hymnal, Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
as we prepare to leave this space, I remind you that the new sung response through Advent is Dona Nobis Pachem, which is in the insert, which we'll get to in a moment, where you'll find it. I invite you to turn to your neighbors north, south, east, and west and share the sign of the peace of Christ. May the peace of Christ be with you. And as I offer the benediction, if you choose to sit and continue to worship through the postlude, then please sit with the Holy Spirit and continue to worship through the postlude. If the Holy Spirit calls you out into Fellowship Hall to start with a cup of coffee and some grapes and donut holes, then please come and join the fellowship in Fellowship Hall over the coffee. So brothers and sisters, as we leave this place, may we go out knowing that from generation to generation, we have been claimed and loved. From generation to generation, God is beside us. From generation to generation, we are not alone. The God of yesterday, the God of tomorrow, knows us by name, loves us, and calls us forth, saying, go and be the person you are called to be, loved wildly, to love wildly, and to do justice, today and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.